All right, welcome everyone. Everyone's and we will go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Hi, and welcome. Um, my name is Ginger Coletto. I am the volunteer college coordinator here at Scripps Ranch High School. And today we are so lucky to have Gina Kim here from San Diego State University, who's going to be sharing with us um, information about SDSU. And um, I wanted to share with you a little bit quickly before we get started here about some upcoming college fairs. Um, if you have any interest in um, these ones, there's ones going on October 21st with Bates, Davidson, Oberlin, and Occidental. We have the Claremont Colleges coming up in just a couple days. Colorado Mesa University and a, and a lot of the schools from the Colorado area are doing a Celebrate Colorado um, uh, college fair. And you can see the dates right there. One of them is happening today, like right, or no, in a couple hours. We also have the ongoing college coroner vlog that has a lot of two minute videos and I'll show you guys real, uh, also where to find this on the Scripps Ranch High School Foundation website. There's also the colleges that change lives that are gonna be doing a presentation. College Wise, this one I just found out about, it's taking place October 26th and 26th, 7th, featuring over 200 colleges. Um, explore college options with Duke, Georgetown, Harvard, University of Pennsylvania and Stanford. We've got the NACAC virtual college fairs taking place October 18th and November 8th. And then also there's a bunch of virtual presentations available through the Regional Admissions Counselors of California. All of this information can be accessed on the College Corner. So that is where you can get updates on current college fairs that are going on. You can also see the full list of our um, Wednesday College Series on there, and there's also a bunch of other resources located there. Our virtual college fair is the one where I was mentioning about there being a two minute video from different colleges. And this is the way it looks when you hop on there, it's the virtual college fair. And on there are also the recordings of the Wednesday College Series. All of this is available through the Scripps Ranch High School Foundation website, and you go to College Corner, and there you will see college and career series. So that is what I have for you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and now turn this over to Gina Kim, who is going to go ahead and get started with the presentation on San Diego State University. Gina? Thank you for my camera. Okay. You're not. All right, guys. Um, hi, my name is Gina. Again, my name is Gina Kim, and I am the Senior Admissions and scholarship coordinator at San Diego State. And so today I just wanted to go over information with you about our school, about our programs, um, about timelines and things like that. And if at any point you guys have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. I feel like that works the best. Um, I have the chat window open, so you can just put your questions in the chat and I will address them as I see them. Um, but we don't have too much time, so I'm just gonna go jump right into it. If you've never been to SCSU before, we're really about like 20 minutes away from Scripps Ranch High School, so it's not too far, it's not too close. Um, since you guys are in a high school south of Highway 56, you are a local school to San Diego State, and that means that you don't have to live on campus if you don't want to. Um, if you still want to, you can definitely can apply for housing, but for you guys, the only time we would require housing is if you are part of the Weber Honors College. And I'll go over housing uh, towards the end. I have a whole slide on it. But in terms of where we are in San Diego, we're about 10 minutes away from downtown and about 15 minutes away from the beaches. We're directly about 15 minutes east of Ocean Beach. So that eight freeway, if you go just east, we're right on the eight. Uh, we are the only university in San Diego that has a transit center on campus. And what that means is that the trolley stops on our campus as well as all the major buses. So if you guys ever been to like downtown or Fashion Valley area or Mission Valley, um, you see the trolley going around. We have an actual physical underground station on our campus about like a minute's walk from away from where my office is. So it's very essential. So you can definitely utilize public transportation to get around the San Diego area. If you do choose to live on campus or if you're required to live on campus to the Honors College, just keep in mind that we don't allow first time freshmen to bring cars their first year. And that's just to minimize the traffic and our, our carbon footprint and things like that. So the trolley station um, and the buses are going to be a great way to get around 
and we're very Uber and Lyft friendly as well. Um, if you have an exemption, if you need an exemption, say that you have a job um, closer to where your house is, but you still want to live on campus, but you still want to work, um, there are exemption forms that you can fill out for housing, uh, sorry, through parking services, and they will review your situation and allow you to have it or not. They, they have to approve it uh, for you to have your car on campus, but there are ways to uh, file an exemption if you needed your car for anything. Okay, some fast facts. We currently have about 34,000 students enrolled at SDSU. Uh, with that um, large amount of students, we are one of the largest CSUs in this system. So as you're looking into colleges right now, things that you want to be aware of as you're applying to colleges, are you okay with the size of the school? Are you okay with the location? Um, do you want to be close to the beach? Do you want to be in the mountains? Do you mind being in the valley where it's a little bit hotter? Uh, what kind of programs are you looking for? What kind of um, opportunities are you looking for at your school? So these are things that you do want to start researching if you haven't yet, because this is going to be your home for the next four years. You want to make sure that it's the best place for you and that you, you feel at home um, no matter where you are. So with 34,000 students, again, we are one of the largest CSUs. Some other large CSUs that are larger than us, we have uh, Cal Poly. No, not Cal Poly, so they're smaller. Uh, CSUN, which is in Northridge, close to LA. Long Beach is a little bit bigger than us. So uh, with those three campuses, we are the largest CSUs. Uh, just for funsies, the smallest CSU in the system is Cal Maritime Academy. They're a very specialized school, and they only have 1,100 students, so less than the student population at your school. Um, but they're a very specialized school, really focusing on maritime things, like maritime transportation or engineering, things like that. For our students, we offer 202 academic degree choices, ranging from your bachelor's, master's, to doctoral programs. So whatever you wanted to study or pursue at SDSU, we do have programs that are for you. And we're very proud of the fact that we're in the top 35 in the nation for ethnic diversity. So at SDSU, you'll be taking classes with students from all over the world, different backgrounds and different cultures, getting to know, uh, learn what happens outside of San Diego, California. I know we like to, we're in our own little bubble, but we have the whole world to look forward to. And that really speaks to our study abroad program as well. So currently we're ranked number one in California and number five in the nation overall for study abroad. So we send thousands of students abroad every year. Obviously right now we're not, we're not sending anybody abroad. We've actually recalled those students back to their home uh, because of COVID. But hopefully once this subsides, hopefully quick, uh, we'll get back into sending our students all over the world. I would say the most popular uh, country for our students to go to is Europe. A lot of students want to go to Spain, London, France, um, but we have programs all over the world, including like Dominican Republic, you can go anywhere in Asia, uh, pretty much all over the world as long as it's safe. Okay. For student involvement, we are a very active campus. We have over 300 different student organizations, ranging from cultural organizations to religious organizations to interest-based organizations. Anything that you're wanting in a student club or organization we have for you. If we don't, it's really organization or through research or through internship. We have research available for all of our students, whether you're a women's studies major, engineering major. Um, so we want you to get involved with that before you graduate from SDSU. All it takes is a conversation with your professor. We also have associated students, kind of like ASB in high school. They control millions and millions of dollars in budget. Um, so you get really good practical experience if you're interested in business, leadership, or politics. This is a great way to get involved. Plus, you're the voice for the student, so you can make a really big impact before you leave. If you're elected as an uh, executive member, like a president, vice president, or whatnot, you also get paid a salary, which is really cool. And uh, if you're interested in Greek life, we also have 46 fraternities and sororities on campus. I know that this year, um, all of their recruitment was done virtual, so I don't know what's gonna happen next year, but once, if COVID goes away or if there's a vaccine, then um, we, can, we can bet on having those back on campus. For student recreation, we have um, our Aztec Recreation Center, which is called the ARC for short. It's our main gym on campus where we have all the machines you can imagine for, uh, you know, working out, we have basketball courts, we have um, a 40 foot climbing wall, so you can exercise that way. So the ARC is your gym on campus, everything you need fitness wise is gonna be there for you. Across the street from the ARC, which is um, still on campus, we have the Aquaplex, which is where our pools are housed. So if, you know, if we weren't 
working from home or attending school virtually, today would be a really popular day at the pool because it's so hot. Uh, but we have a lap pool and a recreation pool. So depending on what you want to do at the pool, we have something for you. Okay. In Mission Bay, uh, we have an aquatic center, so kind of where SeaWorld is located. At the aquatic center, SDC students can take classes like kayaking, surfing, um, any water sport you can imagine can take classes there for college credit. So you can spend a semester learning how to surf. It could help your GPA. It's going to count towards your units for graduation. So it's just a fun way to be outside of the classroom and enjoy what St. David can offer you. I know you guys are all from St. Diego, so you're used to just being able to go to the beach whenever you want. But imagine someone coming from like, you know, Kentucky, where you're landlocked, uh, being able to take surfing classes while you're a college student for college credit is a pretty cool thing. And we highly recommend that you take at least one class at the Aquatic Center um, before you graduate. It's just a great experience. For sports, we are a Division I school, so we have uh, the best of the best. And for all of our home games, SDC students are admitted free. So you can get as many basketball games, football games as you want to while you're a student at San Diego State. We also have intramural and club sports available as well. Club sports are still competitive, kind of like on a D2 level. Um, so it does require you to be in a team and travel and things like that. But intramural is just if you want to pick up a game of basketball with um, other SDC students, like a non-commitment thing, you can go ahead and pick up a game through our intramural sports. If you guys have any questions about student life, go ahead and put them in the chat and I will be more than happy to answer them. All right, diving right into academics. So I, I do want to spend about a minute or two talking about our majors and that's because when you apply to San Diego State, you do have to choose a major to apply to. And that's because all of our majors are impacted. Uh, we have more students applying to each major than that we have seats available for. So by that means all of our majors are competitive on its own. So when you apply for a major, we're going to compare you against other students who apply for the same major and not all the students who apply to San Diego State. So you do have to choose a major to apply to. And this is just one slide of two with our majors, so there's more on the next page. Um, I did want to focus my spiel on uh, a couple of, of programs on this page. First and foremost, our nursing program. Our nursing program is a direct entry program. There aren't too many of those in California, nonetheless, a CSU. So our nursing program being direct entry is extremely competitive and extremely selective. It's our most competitive and most selective program at San Diego State. Last year, we had about 7,000 students apply for nursing and our admissions rate was about 6%. Um, and we really only have space for about 120 students a year. We uh, purposely keep it that small so that we can make sure everybody gets placed in the right clinicals and that, that you graduate in four years. And we have about a 99% NCLEX passing rate, which shows you how great our program is. But if you're interested in nursing, you have to apply for nursing, be admitted for nursing for you to do nursing. We don't allow anybody to change majors into nursing specifically because that would already put you behind. All right, so direct entry, you can't switch into. Um, our performing arts majors, music, dance, and theater, there's also an audition component to your, uh, to your admissions. So not only are we going to look at your academics, but we're also going to consider your audition. And if you did apply for any of those performing arts majors, the department will reach out to you uh, with more information about auditions. Typically, it takes place around February and they could be, um, you could just film something or, you know, record something and send it to them via YouTube or whatnot. Um, this is the rest of our majors. Arts and Letters is our biggest college. Um, if you're not sure of what you want to study quite yet, that's 100% fine. We do have undeclared as a major, but just keep in mind that undeclared itself is also impacted and also a very popular option. So if you have, a, if you have um, an idea of what you want to study, then it's a, better to apply directly for that major. If you're not sure, then undeclared is an option, but again, it's popular. I would say your admissions rate is about 20 to 30 percent, um, except for nursing, which is which last year was about six to seven percent. If you're interested in going to med school or law school or any of the um, programs listed under pre-professional programs, keep in mind that these are not majors at San Diego State, but these are advising programs. So no matter what major you're in, whether you're studying art and you want to go to medical school, you can always meet with a pre-professional advisor in pre-med and they can help you figure out what your prerequisites are and um, how to apply to the school that you want to go to, how to prepare for exams and things like that. So these are free advising programs for anybody wanting to go into those areas after you graduate from San Diego State. I'm going to pause for a question really quick. 
Uh, looking back on sports, do freshmen play? What do, what would a typical schedule look like? What is the season, off-season practice schedule? That's a very specific question for our athletic department. Um, I would recommend that you reach out to the coach or assistant coach for the sport that you're interested in, because it's going to depend on the sport. Some sports accept walk-on students, some sports don't, you have to be recruited for them. So it, it's a little bit different for all of our D1 sports. So I do recommend that you reach out to our uh, coaches or assistant coach because coaches are really busy and they can help you answer that question. Some important dates. So this screen, I really want our seniors to focus on. If you're a junior, sophomore, or freshman, this may not necessarily apply to you when you apply. But for this year, for fall 2021 admissions for current seniors, our application is open October 1st to December 4th. Normally it closes November 30th, but Thanksgiving happens to fall on the very last weekend of um, November this year and coincides with their deadline, but we wanted our students to be able to get help if you needed it. So we did extend for all CSUs, the application deadline is December 4th. You can apply to all 23 campuses using one application called Calcate Apply, um, and it makes it just easier for everybody, but there is a $70 application fee per CSU campus that you apply to. Once you apply within about seven to 10 business days, um, you'll get an email from us with your red ID number and your web portal information. It's important that you go ahead and activate your web portal when we ask you because that's how we communicate with you with decisions, with transcripts and deadlines and things like that. Decisions typically come out around March and um, you have until May 1st to accept your offer of admission. All right, the biggest change this year due to COVID is that for current seniors, for students applying for fall 2021 admission, the CSUs are going test blind. That means that we're not looking at your SAT or ACT for admissions at all. So even if you have a perfect score of 1600 and you put that on your application, that will not be considered for admissions because we know that test dates were being canceled left and right. It was really hard to get a test date. So we just are going test blind for fall 2021. We don't know yet what that's gonna look like for fall 2022, 2023, and 2024. So just keep that in mind that for current seniors, only this year for now, um, SAT, ACTs will not be considered for admissions. The only way we would use a test score would could be for course placement to place you into the appropriate math and English class. So if you do have a score, go ahead and put it on your application, but it's not gonna be used for admissions in any way. Can't hurt you, it can't harm you. And you can you don't even have to report it if you don't want to. Um, so if we don't look at SAT scores or ACT score, what do we look at? The most important thing is for you to have a competitive GPA. That's going to hold the most weight when we're looking at your admissions. Um, so initially, we're looking at your 10th and 11th grade A through G GPA. And uh, your A through G classes are listed there on the side for you. Those are the minimum requirements to be CSU eligible. So we're looking at your 10th and 11th grade A through G GPA. We give you the extra weight up to four approved honors AP or IB classes, which is the same thing as eight semesters. So we give you that extra point for up to eight semesters of approved honors AP or IB. Um, even though 12th grade isn't gonna be used when we're initially making our decisions, it is important that you maintain your GPA because we expect you to stay competitive. If your GPA drops below what you were admitted with, your admissions could be at risk. Everything that we use to meet you is self-reported. So make sure as you do your application, you have your transcript in front of you so you're not guessing what courses you took and what grades you received. You have to report everything accurately. We don't request transcripts until you're accepted and, um, and decide to commit. Okay. And the other important thing is to uh, go above and beyond your minimum APG requirements. So instead of just taking three years of math, take a fourth year of math. Um, instead of just doing two years of science, take a third or fourth year. This is especially important if you want to go into any of our engineering majors or computer science majors. They're going to um, see you as more competitive if you have more math and more science classes. So go above and beyond. Another thing that will help you is that your local students, local students do get priority for admission. So um, being local students to SCSC coming from Scripps and Tricycle, you get the additional points. Okay, that's pretty much it. We don't look at um, for admissions. We don't look at letters recommendations. We don't look at subject scores. We don't look at essays. We look at your GPA, the course, and the courses that you took. The only time we would look at a letter recommendation is if you're applying for EOP, which is the Educational Opportunity Program. 
for our first generation or low income college students. Um, if you're not quite ready to come to SDSU straight from high school, we do have transfer. And if you go to one of our local community colleges, listed there on the bottom left, you do get priority for admission. For costs, our cost this year was $7,720 for the year. So we're a semester school, so divide that by half. And that's how, um, how much you would pay per semester for fall and for spring. If you decide to live on campus, our um, housing on average is about $18,000, including your meal plan, but that could fluctuate depending on how many roommates you have or the type of meal plan that you have, but that's about average. Books and supplies, about $4,000. Um, add more for gas and parking if you are commuting, but for one year, we're looking at about $30,000. We accept the FAFSA for financial aid, so make sure you do your FAFSA application by the priority deadline, which is March 2nd, and send your information to SDC. We can provide you with the estimated financial aid award. For scholarships, we do have tons and tons of scholarships for our students. Um, the way our scholarships work now is that you have to be admitted to, and be, you have to be admitted and committed to the university to apply for SDC scholarships. The exception to that is the merit scholarship, which I am also in charge of. We get a handful of great students from Scripps Center every year through the merit scholarship program. And if you do get the merit scholarship, it covers um, your basic tuition fees for all four years, so roughly about $35,000 scholarship. Uh, to be eligible for that, it's not clear cut anymore since the SAT, ACT are gone, but just know that it is invitation only and you have to be in the top pool of the most competitive students. So depending on the applicant pool, that will look different every year. Um, but if you are a high achieving student and you're in that top tier of students, then I will reach out to you uh, personally to invite you to apply for the scholarship. So do keep an eye out for an email from me um, around December, January, or February. Um, if you are eligible for the merit scholarship, I will personally invite you to apply. Housing, like I said, we don't require students coming from your school to live on campus if you don't want to. The only exception to that is the Weber Honors College. And so if you are part of the Weber Honors College, you do have to live on campus for the first year with other honors students. This year, that was uh, completely optional due to COVID. But next year, assuming everything goes back to normal, um, that will be the requirement. And you can apply for housing if you're, if you, if you're, since you're not required, uh, you can also apply to housing if you want to live on campus. We highly recommend it. Um, let's skip that for now. That's it for me. Uh, that's my contact information on the screen for you. That's my direct email address. I work really closely with your counselors as well with issues for Cal State Apply, how to fill out the application. But if you guys wanted to reach out to me directly with any questions or anything that you have, feel free to email me directly. Um, it usually takes about a couple business days for me to respond back. But if you don't hear back from me within a week or two, you're more than welcome to send it again. Sometimes things do get buried. Okay. Yes, I am going to address some of the questions um, about the nursing program. If you don't get into nursing, but you still want to go to SDSU, can you do a different major? Uh, you, yeah, so you can still come to SDSU. Um, the only thing is you can apply to only one major on the application. So if you are interested in nursing and want to see if you get in that way, then you have to apply for nursing. Um, knowing that nursing is really competitive, if you wanted to apply for a different program, that's fine. But just keep in mind, you cannot change your major into nursing. For you, if you didn't get in for nursing from the beginning, but you still wanted to pursue nursing in SDSU, uh, the other option is a second bachelor's degree in nursing. So once you get your bachelor's degree um, initially, you can come back to SDSU. You have to reapply for SDSU to get your second bachelor's in nursing. And that's the only program that we have that offers a second bachelor's. So it's kind of a roundabout way, but you can also consider going to community college, get your associate's degree in nursing, and apply for our nursing program that way. So there are options. If you want to know more about that, go ahead and email me directly. How can an application stand out? Um, because we're not looking at we're not looking at essays, we're not looking at letters recommendations. The only way to really stand out is to have the best GPA that you can. Uh, for seniors, your GPA is already kind of set. But if you're a junior, sophomore, freshman, make sure you pay attention to your GPA and have the highest GPA that you can, because that's the, that's how you stand out. Uh, recommendation letters. Like I said, for admissions, we don't look at recommendation letters, but for EOP, you do need to have at least two recommendations. Uh, and you would input your teacher or counselor's email address on your Cal State Apply application. They'll be sent a link uh, to fill out a letter of recommendation, but that's only for EOP. 
Okay, a uh, couple of questions about the honors program. Our honors program is the Weber Honors College on campus. Um, it does require a separate application. I believe the priority deadline is February 2nd. So even if you're not, if you haven't found out your admissions by then, you still want to apply by the priority deadline. That's where they gather the most of their applications and their admissions. Um, but the Weber Honors College um, is a really great program on campus. So there's no additional fee and any major is eligible for the Honors College. And um, they do have their own website, honors.stc.edu. It has all the perks of the program. But my favorite is that all your honors classes lead to a minor in interdisciplinary studies. And your honors classes are going to be limited to 25 students or less. So you have a small, um, you have a more one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professors. But again, you do have to uh, apply separately. They do ask for short answer questions. So do go to their website to get more information as well as the link for the application. What majors could be in the pre-dental track? Any major could take you to dental school as long as you have the prerequisites done. Typically, students like to focus on the sciences because your prerequisites all line up and, and may take less, you have to take less than what you would do if you're a different major. But technically, any major um, could get you to the pre-dental track. Just make sure you meet with an advisor to discuss the prerequisite classes. How competitive is business? It's a very popular program at SCSU. We are known for our business program. Um, but like I said, everything besides nursing is about a 20 to 30 percent admissions rate. Average GPA, oh, great question. Our average GPA last year was about a 3.97. But also keep in mind that last year, we also um, looked at SAT, ACT scores. So that's going to look completely different this year since we were going test blind. So that 3.97, don't let that scare you. That was just for last year in combination with SAT scores. But this year, it could be very, very different. Uh, let's see, are admissions to all state schools mutually accepted or will being accepted to a school like San Marcos lessen your chances of being admitted to SCSU? Great question. We don't see, we at a CSU, we don't see what other schools you apply to. So just because you apply to 10 other CSUs or were admitted into 10 different CSUs doesn't make any impact on your SCSU admissions because we don't, we don't care um, and we don't see any of that information. So it has absolutely no, makes no difference. Do I think GPA will be higher or lower this year? I really cannot say. It's really, really hard um, to predict just because this year is so much different than what we've been doing um, for, for decades. So unfortunately, I'm going to have no comment on that just because I, I really don't know. All right, guys, that was like a lightning round of questions. I do love it. It makes time go by really fast. Um, I filmed a Cal State Apply video on uh, for San Diego Unified School District students, and it's available on the district website. Uh, your counselors and your counselors should have the link somewhere. Um, Ms. McDonald sent it to me directly, but it's on the department website or district website. You can always go in. It's like a 40 minute video showing you how to fill out the application, but you can fast forward to different parts and see um, how you can fill out the application. Pretty easy, just don't wait till the last minute because last year it did crash uh, on the last day. But you're always more than welcome to contact me directly if you want assistance with your Cal State Apply application. And final question, um, is the GPA weighted? Yeah, so sorry, the, the 3.97 GPA was weighted uh, using the CSU weight, so the extra point for up to eight semesters. Okay, all right guys. Um, I can stick around for a few more minutes. If you have to go to a different class or whatnot, you're more than welcome to, but I'll stick around for a few more minutes and answer some questions on the chat. But thanks for coming. Uh, get some rest, take your eyes off the screen because I know Zoom fatigue is real, but hopefully I will see you at SDSU next year or the year after that. But thanks for coming, guys. Gina, it looks like there was one other question. Yeah. If both of the students have the same GPA scores, what other criteria does the school look for? Yes, that's a great question. So we admit by major. So it's hard to say um, what other criteria are going to be looked at. But we we're using something called multi-factor multi admissions. So if you have the exact same GPA and you apply to the exact same major, um, it may come down to have you participated in a college prep program like AVID or Upward Bound, that could get you additional points. 
um, what's another thing? Um, if you were at the time a foster or home, foster youth or homeless, you can get additional points for that. So we do give points for extenuating circumstances like foster youth or homelessness. Um, and you would just indicate that on your application as a yes or no question. But other than that, you know, if you have the same GPA, everything is exactly the same for the same major, you'll both probably be offered admissions. But if at that point you, one person isn't and one person is, is, you can always email me directly. I can take a look at your file. I just can't comment on other people's applications, obviously, but I can figure out why, I can help you figure out why you weren't admitted, um, things like that. So that, that at that time, you can work directly one-on-one -on -one with me and I'll help you figure it out. Can you take classes at Miramar College and transfer them to SBC? Absolutely. So I know that for your school, a lot of you guys are taking concurrent classes at Mesa or Miramar or whatnot. Um, as long as the course is transferable, which most are from a local community college, you can bring those to SDSU and you'll already have college credit going into um, college. It's not uncommon for me to see students, especially from your school actually, um, to come in at the at the sophomore or even junior level status because you already have so many APs and uh, college courses done. So yes, you can definitely do that. Excellent. Any other questions? Anything else? Oops. All right, Gina, I think right. that's it.